This is a Verge 3D tutorial. We're gonna take a Blender 3D scene, add it to the Verge 3D network, and then upload it to a Webflow website via an iframe. So the first thing you need to do is you need to install Blender, go to blender.org, you can install it, it's a free 3D software. Um, you can also install Verge 3D for free, but you have to pay $300 if you wanna use it for commercial purposes. And then Webflow, you'll need to pay for an account plan if you wanna use embeds on their website. So um, once you have all that ready to go, you can open up Blender and there's a couple things you first need to do is you need to go to uh, edit preferences and then you need to add verge 3d just check the check mark and it should be good to go and then you can open up the app manager and that's going to bring you over to the three verge 3d app manager and there's a whole bunch of prod projects already in there they're just templates that um, Verge 3D adds automatically. We can actually create our own. So you can go over on the left side under the home button, create a new one. You can call it whatever you want, hit enter, save it. Um, and that should be ready to go. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is you need to go to Blender and actually create your 3D assets. So I'm not gonna go through an in-depth tutorial of Blender, I don't think that makes a whole lot of sense, but if you do wanna learn how to create 3D graphics for your websites or for like Verge 3D interactions like this, I'm actually coming out with a course this summer. If you go to the website in the link in the description, you can get 75% off of that course for when it does come out, you learn how to create awesome 3D graphics and animations and things of that nature. So go get 75% off and you'll have that in your email for when the course does come out. So the idea that I'm looking for is I'm gonna be creating a person named Charlie. Charlie is going to need a hat to wear. So the idea is, is that there's gonna be this head. It's not gonna be full body, just a head. The head's gonna be spinning 360 on the Z axis. And basically you're gonna be able to click, click buttons or these like spheres in the scene. And as you click a sphere, a different hat pops on their head. You click a different sphere, a different hat pops on their head. That's kind of the idea that I'm going for. But basically what I did was I created the head, I created the hair, um, I sculpted it out a little bit, I remeshed it to make sure it was really low poly and wasn't overly bloating the scene once it gets uploaded to the Verge 3D network. I added some eyes and then some very minor details. Again, this is really low poly. Um, I didn't wanna go in super detail just for this example and also I didn't wanna bloat down the scene. Um, so we got his face, his hair. I also added five different hats to this scene, just added some unique features to them. Um, again, some of them you can see the, the faces still because they are very low poly, but it gets the job done and you kind of get the idea of what I'm going for. So once I had all of those assets ready to go, you can go back to the app manager in Verge 3D and you can actually open up the blend file for your new scene. So once you have that file opened up, you can import the asset sets that you previously created and import those into the Verge 3D scene. And that way you'll be able to now have that scene which you can upload to the Verge 3D network. So the way I usually do it is by appending it. So if you go to file, append, you can find the file that you had saved for your previous blend file, find the assets, whether they're objects or materials or collections. Um, if you have um, some objects that have a lot of objects put together, you'll probably wanna make it a collection so that you can just import the whole collection, make sure the parenting is all set up correctly. So I mostly set up collections with an empty as the parent just to make the the animations easy if I have any animations so once you have all of those assets added to the new verge 3d blend file you can now set up the scene you can set the camera's position you can add lighting you can add a focal length to the camera to make it wide angle or not wide angle um, you can set up animations for your scene now if you have animations you have to be careful and you have to have a broader idea of what the goal is for your project so for example if you have an interaction where you want to click something and and then you want the animation to start. You have to keep that in mind, how many frames you're adding, um, what you want to happen when the animation occurs, that sort of thing. Because if you have lots of different animations and they're gonna be happening at different times, you have to keep in mind when those times are gonna happen, how many frames they are, and if they're gonna match up once they're on the Verge 3D network and on your Webflow website. So you can actually go in here to the Verge 3D settings. You can see this panel here. There's Verge 3D settings kind of dispersed throughout and you can basically just set the Verge 3D settings however you want because they're a little bit different than the normal Blender settings. So for example, in the camera, if you go over to the camera tab, you can actually change how people can interact with the camera. So do you want people to be able to kind of fly through the scene as a first person? Do you want them to be able to orbit the scene? Do you want them to have no controls? For my example, I wanted them to have zero control of the camera. I wanted the camera 
just to sit there, no interaction, no animation, just sit there and be a camera. Uh, so I set the controls to no controls. If you go up here to the uh, rendering tab, there's also a bunch of other uh, Verge 3D settings that you can set you can kind of see how i have things set up you know you can add compression you can bake things you can optimize mesh attribute you can do all sorts of things exporting animations not export animations that's up to you and what you want to do for your scene but you can kind of see what i did for my scene and then there are also some other verge 3d settings which um, we'll get into actually right now and let's talk about the materials so blender has render engines like cycles and eevee those render engines render light and colors and materials and textures different ways than the web renders uh, textures and materials and lights and that sort of thing. So you have to keep in mind what you see here in Blender is not going to look exactly like what you see on the web. What I like to do is I like to render things out or view things in Eevee, in the Eevee render engine rather than Cycles. Cycles generally looks a little bit better, but it's not gonna look very much like Cycles does here in Blender. So I like to render things in Eevee just to kind of get an idea for how they might look on the web. Things like subsurface scattering, which I actually have for Charlie's face, doesn't work too well on the web. How it looks here in Blender is not how it's gonna look exactly on the web, and you're gonna have to do some fiddling around. One way you can do that is you can click the sneak peek button, and then when you click the sneak peek button, it's gonna open up the project on the web so you can kind of see exactly how it's gonna look on like this is how it's actually gonna look on a finished website product. So once you have everything ready to go in here in Blender, you can now export this project. If you go uh, to the file tab, export, and then export the Verge 3D GLTF, and then just overwrite that previous file, you can now, it, what it's doing is it's uploading that blend file back onto the Verge 3D server. So now, it's added to the Verge 3D server and you can either upload it or you can add interactions, which is what we're going to do right now. So to add interactions, they're called puzzles. I'm not a huge fan of the name puzzles, but I get the idea of it. So basically Verge 3D puzzles are a way to add interactions and animations and to get your 3D scene to interact with your website in a visual manner so that you don't actually have to write the script. So. I'm not gonna, there's there's so many things here we could talk about. I mean, look at this huge long list. I'm not gonna talk about all of them. I'm just kind of gonna basically show you what I did for my scene and then maybe walk through a few of the other features. So there are two tabs here uh, in it. I think that's initialize. So what happens initially and then the main, what happens after initialization. Um, so I added two things here. One of them was the setup preloader. Uh, generally Verse 3D has a preloader. It looks kind of ugly. I don't really like it. So I just add this and that gets rid of it. You can technically add your own if you want to. I don't have one, so I just got added that just to get rid of it. And then configure application, I added a few different settings. I got rid of the default full screen button. I made it a transparent background and that was it. Everything else I kept the same um, because I wanted it to be PNG because I had a different background on my website um, than I do in the actual blend scene. So if we go over here to main, we can see I have a few super simple animation. So again, the idea is when you click one of these five balls, a hat pops up for that that kind of corresponds with that ball color. So here's what I did. I added after zero seconds, here's what we want to happen. We want to hide all of these hats. So basically, I want all the hats to be hidden right off the bat. So I just hit them right off the bat. Um, I also added a when clicked. So when you click each ball, I want the corresponding hat to show up for each of those. So when I click ball one, I want hat one to show and then the rest of the hats to be hidden. And I did exactly the same thing. It's basically just copied and pasted. When ball two is clicked, I want hat two to show up and the rest of the hats to be hidden. When ball three is clicked, I want hat three to be shown and the rest of the hats to be hidden. Um, and then I just copy and paste that for ball four and five. And you can see here, it is working very, very well. When you click each one of these balls, the corresponding hat is shown. And that was literally all I had to do. Um, you can see in the blend file, I actually parented the hat to the head. So technically the hat's just sitting there the whole time, but we just, we hit it when we click these buttons. 
Um, but here, let me just walk through a couple of these things. We have different ends events we can have. When you click something, when you hover something, um, when you drag over an object or a collection or something like that, you can add different animations and interactions. Um, we have objects, collections, uh, groups are basically collections. Um, we have materials that we can change based on different interactions. We have animations that we can cause to happen. Say when we click something, we have an animation like zoom in to a di different object or rotate or follow the mouse or whatever. Um, we can make things, uh, make cameras and lights change based on things we do on the web. Um, and like I said, I, I, there's no point in going through every single one of these because there are other tutorials out there and I'm gonna be making more of these walkthroughs and tutorials in the future. If you do want to see more of these, let me know so I can know, do I need to spend more time on this? Is there interest in the future? Um, because I think this is the future of the web, but I don't know what the my audience thinks. I don't know what you guys want to see, if this is something you're interested in, or should I spend more time elsewhere um, on the web flow side of things? Just let me know. Um, but okay, once all this is ready to go, we can now go back, we, so we'll save, and then we will we can run our JavaScript and refresh and see if they're working correctly. Um, but basically, the next thing we need to do is we need to upload it to the Verse 3D server with our blend file and puzzles intact. So we can go back here to the app manager and we can click the up arrow, and now it's basically uploading our scene to the Verse 3D network, and we can now copy this iframe embed code, and we can paste it right into our Webflow or whatever other website we have. So. We'll go back, we'll go over into Webflow. Um, I just created a super simple landing page. Um, it basically said, hey, Charlie needs a hat. Can you help him pick one out? And then I added an embed uh, iframe right underneath it. I did some styling changes. I made it 100% height and 100% width. And then I just added a set height on the div, on the parent div. Um, so basically that was just to size it out and I centered it and now the interaction is working on the Webflow website. So one thing I should explain is that the Verge 3D interactions and animations are not gonna play super nicely always with a Webflow website. The reason why is because the Webflow website is hosted on one server and then the Verge 3D uh, scene is hosted on a different server. If they were on the same server, we wouldn't really have any issues. But for example, if you wanted to add like a div block, when you click this div block, I want something in the 3D scene to change. You can't do that if you have an, an iframe in the Webflow website because they're hosted on different servers. You would need to actually export the, the JavaScript code and add that to the actual Webflow website server, or you could export the Webflow website and host it on say like Netlify or something like that. And that's how you could get uh, the them to play nicely together. So. For, for what we're doing, we're just clicking buttons within the iframe code, but if you had an interaction that was outside of the iframe, it wouldn't work very well, and again, they wouldn't play nicely together. Um, so if you had a scroll interaction where when you scroll down the page, you wanted the 3D scene to rotate, that would be very, it would be difficult to do in Webflow. It's, it is doable, um, but you would have to have some very, you know, technical workarounds. And like I said, I wanted to keep things super simple, uh, super basic. So we kept all of the interactions within the iframe code. And that's something you should just keep in mind going forward. That's something you'll have to find a workaround for. Okay, I hope this Verge 3D tutorial was helpful. Again, if you want to learn how to create 3D graphics for your websites, go to the link in the description. I've got a course coming out in the summer. You can get 75% off of that right now, but that code is not going to be available forever. So get it before that goes away. And then also let me know what you guys want to see in the future. I know we couldn't cover everything. We've got a time limit here. Not every, not everyone's going to have the same scenes and same projects and same ideas. But if you do have something that you want to see in the future, we can kind of walk through it together. I can do a live stream. I don't know. I'm, I'm open to ideas, but I hope this was helpful. We'll see ya.